Hello and welcome to another edition of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. And today we have a Patreon requested movie. This is requested by Gonzalo Valdez. He's old school yep. fan, yep. right from the beginning he's yeah. been with us. He wants us to cover La Morte Vivante, which is a French film which translates to Living Dead Girl, which came out in 1982. The movie starts off where we see like this van driving these bums, like they all get out, they're all drinking. It reminds me of like an 80s version of the standard Universal movie where this opens up with the grave robber bums that yeah. show up and everything. That's right, These yeah. are just the <laughs> shitty 80s version. <laughs> these guys roll in all this toxic waste, illegally dumping this waste in these crypts where people are buried. They also get into the coffins of these two women, start robbing them, and like the one guy opens up the one coffin and he's like, oh, she's so beautiful. They're it's like, like <laughs> not decomposed or anything. They're like pristine looking. Yeah, they still have like their color <laughs> to them and everything. Like <laughs> an earthquake happens. Some of that toxic waste dumps over and starts leaking into the bodies. Her hand comes up and it takes out the guy's eyes and he's just... <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> Oh, shit. The guy jumps up and he's got no eyes. He's all... Aah! The other guy slips and falls into that toxic waste <laughs> shit. And his face gets all burnt and melted all up. Just slowly wanders out of the crypt and just starts wandering the fields. There's two sort of shitty, like, American tourists who are just sitting in the middle of the <laughs> nowhere. Field, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's wearing these shitty shoes, too. <laughs> She starts taking pictures of the field and she notices this woman walking through. Later on back in town, she starts asking the townspeople about this woman that she's caught in the photos. Oh, that's Catherine and she used to live up at that castle and she's been dead for years now. So it really starts to intrigue her more and more to the point where she's gonna start investigating. There's a realtor that's trying to sell this castle, talking about the crypts and how there's people buried. Other people buying the castle with the family buried there still? Like, ah, <laughs> oh, that's kind of too weird. Like, get them all dug up and thrown in the garbage. The living dead girl wanders back looking at old pictures that she had. There's an old music box that she opens up. She starts to think back about having a friend did like a blood oath with her that they'd be friends forever. So this real estate agent is a little on the horny side <laughs> and gets her boyfriend back at this castle because yeah. I guess it's a place to have some fun. It's a free spot. The camera pans and she's just totally naked <laughs> like in one <laughs> second she's just new. It's quick. <laughs> they start getting it on on the couch and they're super not having sex. She's like basically just humping his leg. Catherine, the living dead girl, sits behind this piano and starts playing it. Boyfriend gets up to go look. He starts coming back and, <laughs> and he comes in. He's all bored up. up. <laughs> he's shredded <laughs> up. And Catherine kills the realtor on the steps of the castle. We get introduced to Helen, which is Catherine's old friend we saw in those flashbacks and she's calling the castle to check on the sale of the castle to talk with the realtor. Catherine answers, doesn't say anything, but starts playing that music box. Catherine, is that you? Yeah. But there's no answer. She's not answering her. So then she gets in her car, drives to the castle and sees this body laid out on the steps, runs into the castle and sees Catherine sitting at the piano playing this kind of tune. How is this possible? Yeah. How are you alive? Did you fake your death? What? He takes her upstairs and bathes her. She's covering this blood and gets her clean and trying to figure out what's going on. Bathing her on that balcony. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, anyone can be seeing this? <laughs> Catherine starts to get this kind of pain, this agony. Mm -hmm. and then goes back down to the crypt and starts feeding off the blood of one of the grave robbers. Helen follows her and realizes what's going on. She needs this blood. Helen decides to help Catherine seek out the blood. Give me the blood, Lord! Get people in to feed Catherine. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to end the plot. If you want to see how La Morte Vivante, a.k.a. Living Dead Girl, ends, 
watch the movie. This movie was directed by Jean Roland, and uh, he did quite a bit of things, but notably, uh, he did four classic vampire movies. French vampire movies in a row, like just back to back. Mm -hmm. Marina Perot stars in this as Helen, and she's done tons of stuff. She's just basically a super accomplished Italian actress. Francois Blanchard plays Catherine in this, the living dead girl. And again, she's done tons of stuff, but she did a lot of voiceover works for American movies that were put into French. Mm -hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and <laughs> yeah. Popeye and Hackers and stuff like that. <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles being French, that'd yeah. be kind of a crazy trip. Yeah, <laughs> you know, especially all that slang, like yeah. gnarly and all that. <laughs> you know, radical, the? like what would that be in French? Yeah, just, yeah. Radical. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> the same thing, just with an accent. Cowabunga. <laughs> I wonder how they translated the uh, scene where Casey Jones and Donatello are are making fun of each other in alphabetical order. Gack face, hose brain. <laughs> but we're getting off topic. One of the first things that you'll notice about this movie is the fact that it's got an artsy quality to it. The way it's shot, the way it's lit, even the death scenes are extremely artsy, right? Yeah. The way the blood splatters and the way the bodies are laid out, right? Like the yeah. woman on the stairs and the way the blood is dribbling placed there in this this specific artsy way to make it look yeah. beautiful, but yeah. horrific at the same time. To be more poignant, yeah. right? Everything about this movie is extremely poignant. And kind of beautiful. Yeah. It's a gory, but beautiful movie, you know? Mm. The locations of this movie are fantastic. Like, come on, that castle? It just screams character. And same thing with the crypts, those, un those underground crypts. I love how there's always just lit torches. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, yeah. Who's lighting those torches? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And who's replacing them all the yeah. time? Even the town is kind of neat, right? I'd like to drink in that town, like s sit outside and have a beer and yeah. watch the town go by. Because they're having that little party in the town and everyone's drinking wine. And you're like, yeah. ah, I want to be there drinking wine, watching that shitty band playing. <laughs> yeah. That, that polka band that's or... super not really playing <laughs> woman singing but, but there's no, no one singing the yeah. song <laughs> yeah. the pacing for this movie is very different the structure of it is different than yeah. most movies interesting it's not hollywood cookie cutter yeah. pacing at exactly. all exactly and they do a great job of gripping you in with the first couple of kills with the grave robbers and then the movie sort of levels out a bit and it gets quiet and you get a chance to learn about the characters. It hits you in the face and then it just dials itself right back. And then something else crazy will happen, another crazy kill with all this gore. Mm -hmm. Like when the couple gets killed in the house and then again it dials right back down when Helen finds Catherine it just becomes all plot again, all plot yeah. and characters. And I, then something else happens. Yeah. It's like it's really a big roller coaster. Everything in this movie happens for a reason too. Like the kills aren't just throwaway kills, right? right? It leads to something more. The two main characters in this movie are really good, Helen and Catherine. And they're very interesting because there's not much dialogue to drive these characters. It's very silent movie. But it's all about the flashbacks, where mm -hmm. you learn about their childhood friendship. When Helen finds out that Catherine's not actually dead, or revived from the dead, she doesn't know which. That friendship gets rekindled, like what a bizarre friendship! They went from being best friends to best friends again, but in this weird caretaker of a dead person way. But you care for them! It's weird how you care for this dead girl. You care for a living dead girl. And you care for Helen, too. I like how the characters start out being one thing, and then as the movie progresses, Catherine gets more and more disillusioned with, with having to kill, and the roles kind of reverse. And Helen's into killing and, and bringing her the bodies and, yeah. and the, the blood. Give me the blood, Lord! That's what she wants to do. Yeah, and it's, it's a really neat role <laughs> reversal. She gets revived by this toxic waste, kind of technically makes her a zombie. It's almost more a vampire movie because it has that vampire romanticism about living forever and drinking mm -hmm. blood, also having to deal mentally with the idea of having to kill forever. It's more of a vampire movie disguised as a zombie movie. It's almost the director's fifth 
vampire movie in yeah. a way. Almost see this movie being a precursor to Return of the Living Dead. The toxic waste gets dumped and revives the dead. And then also the fact that there's this pain that the dead feels. The suffering. The suffering. But in this case, it's blood that eases the suffering as opposed to Return of the Living Dead. It's the brains. You really see that connection oh, watching yeah. this movie. Yeah, for sure. It's a cool parallel. The gore and the effects are really good in this movie too. And like we had mentioned before already, Everything has its place. Everything's on purpose. Red for the blood is bright. Yeah, it's... that red Italian. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that Italian blood. Blood's too red. <laughs> and the kills, the way she uses her hands, her nails. Her fingernails, which have been growing while she's been dead, which yeah. is cool. <laughs> and she uses, like, brute force yeah. to kill. Really cool. And every like... kill is really bloody and gory. Yeah, yeah. Which is really what it would be yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know and the neat thing about this movie too as gory as it is it's just as sexy yeah this movie is super sexy it reeks sex there's <laughs> yeah. a lot there's that sex scene there's a lot of nudity all the women are sexy you see a lot mm -hmm. of breasts they still manage to keep it classy though but it's not yeah, you're yeah, it's right. not smut, no, right? It's, no, it is classy. On a whole, is uh, pretty quiet and simple, right? The the dialogue for this movie is pretty damn scant. There's almost nothing, but it's just enough to drive each scene. There's a lot of quiet moments in this movie where it's just like Catherine wandering around the castle, and there's barely any music. But it doesn't need it. You don't miss the music. No, no. It it's... makes you really kind of feel the deadness of the living dead girl. It's supposed to be that you feel just as alone as she does. It's lonely being dead. <laughs> Tough making friends. And the ending for this movie is fantastic and you won't see it coming. You expect this movie to end one way and it ends and then there's this long panned out shot at the end and you're just like, that's how they ended it. Oh, yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, Good on you for ending it like that. Yeah, you, you feel satisfied at yeah. the end, you know? It's like, yes, I got my money's worth yeah. on this one. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want a movie that's very stylistic, very sexy, gory, it's to the point, and it'll make you think, then check out 1982's La Morte Vivante. AKA The Living Dead Girl. That's right. And... Damn you, Rob Zombie. Whenever I hear that <laughs> title now, all I can think of is Living Dead Girl. <laughs> and on that note, keep drinking.